Good evening, Riverhouse. Let's let's stand on our feet and get ready to worship Jesus together. How are we doing? Who is grateful to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yeah, let's just let's stand together. Just begin to turn our hearts, our attention to the Lord. I just want to invite everybody let's just either put your hands out if you're comfortable in front of you or maybe let's just begin to raise our hands just turn our affection to Jesus you know the Levites throughout the old covenant when they would come to approach God they had to first turn their back on the people to approach the Lord and it was only after they approached the Lord that they would then turn and come back into the community of believers. And I just, I wanna invite, I wanna issue an invitation tonight to really turn your back on whatever is out there, whatever you came from, whatever, whatever good things or bad things may be going on. I just wanna invite you to turn, to just turn yourself. Say, say no to whatever's behind you, to just turn to Jesus tonight and just set our hearts that we are going to minister and bring an offering to the Lord I just want to invite all of us to together make the posture of our hearts that I didn't come here tonight for what I can receive I came here with an offering to give to Jesus and Romans Romans 12 it says that we're to present ourselves as a living offering, a living sacrifice. And it's the lips that bring praises to the Lord. That's the acceptable sacrifice. So, so just maybe, just confess, maybe turn to somebody on your left or your right and say, I came to bring a sacrifice of praise tonight. Turn to the other person and say, I came to offer Jesus a sacrifice of praise. And now turn to Jesus. Look, look and close your eyes and say, Lord, I have come to bless your holy name in your house this night. Let's just begin to do it. Just begin to offer praise. Just begin to thank him for even letting you be here tonight. We just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Our souls say, let God be magnified. We will exalt your name. We glorify your name. King of kings, Lord of life, you are all together wonderful. Wonderful, faithful and true, mighty to save. God of the angel armies, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, would you come and anoint this time? Would you anoint our worship? that we may ascend before the throne of God and minister to your very heart, Jesus. Hallelujah.
faces we say your holy oh lord would you show us your glory oh lord would you show us your glory with unveiled faces we say your holy with unveiled faces we say your word with unveiled faces we 
63, Psalm of David. Oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there's no water because I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. That's the cry of David, the cry for the glory, the cry for the only one that satisfies. I just sense that the Holy Spirit, would you just remind us right now that Jesus is the only well that satisfies. And this is Jesus himself in John 7. On the last day of the great feast, he stood up and cried out, saying, if you are thirsty, come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So I just invite you right now to express that desire. This, this song we're singing, we want to see your glory. But we're not singing it as orphans. We're singing it as a cherished bride, as sons and daughters. Jesus just says, drink. If you're thirsty, if your soul longs for me like a dry and weary land where there is no water, if you long to behold me and see me in my sanctuary, come. Just come and drink. Come and be filled. I just invite you to take this song and make it, make it an intimate prayer to Jesus right now. Lord, with an unveiled face that you shed your blood to remove from my eyes. I long to see your glory. The word presence is the same word for face. Sometimes we get so hung up. What does it mean to see his face? It means to experience his presence. Lord, we ask for the outpouring of grace. We ask for the outpouring of your glorious presence. We thirst, and so we come to drink tonight from the only well that satisfies, from the only one that satisfies. Yes, keep singing. Keep singing. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yesterday, today, and forever, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> it's yes. Expectation, oh Lord, oh Lord, would you show us your glory? 
says you have not because you ask not. anything in my name, he'll give it to you. Until you've asked for nothing in my name, ask and now you will receive so that your joy may be made full. And I just, I just invite you to just, let's spend a couple minutes and I want you to, to tell Jesus, to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come upon us and would you increase our faith that you are the father of lights who gives without shadow, without change, without variation. That if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will the father give to those the Holy Spirit, those who ask him? Jesus, we ask in the name of Jesus 
Now just, maybe if, if, if you're okay, ask the person next to you, say, is it okay if I lay my hand on you and bless? And I want you to just give a yes and amen. Just say, Father, I partner with my brother, with my sister. And I just say yes and amen. I partner my faith with my brother's faith, with my sister's faith. And we call upon the name of the Lord tonight. We call upon you. Lord, let your ears be attentive to the prayers offered in your house tonight. And may heaven respond. Let heaven respond. We say yes to miracles. We say yes to things that are impossible taking place in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say yes to redemption, to the redemption of the kingdom breaking into now. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, we're a house of prayer. We are your house of prayer. And we lean into heaven tonight. Hallelujah. 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 All right, now let's just close. Just, just bless. It says that the priest of old, what they were instructed to do is to set the name of the Lord. The Levites were told, it said, put my name upon the people that I may come and bless them. So I just want you to stand as a royal priest and whoever is next to you, just say, Father, I put your name upon them and I invoke the blessing of God upon my brother, upon my sister, and upon this house in the name of Jesus. Come on. expectation that God's going to do something for you. Well, while the choir is getting set, do you guys want to give them a hand, give worship team a hand? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I am just up here tonight to uh, do offering before our exciting night with Richard Gordon. Who's excited? Awesome. Well, how about we get that same excitement as we continue worship into our offering? Who loves giving money? We love to give money. It shows that we are giving him more than just these, these moments of worship, but we're giving him the things that cause us stress and abundance. So let's stand to our feet and let's pray this, blessing the Lord with our entire lives and our finances. Amen? All right. Father, we offer back to you today what you have already bestowed upon us praising you for past provision, trusting you for present provision, and believing you for future provision. We ask that in your kindness, you'd break our independent spirit in the areas we often vie for control. Our finances, our relationships, our ambitions, and our plans. Liberate us into deeper dependence, O oh God. In all things, we give ourselves unto you, that you would satisfy us with yourself, our glorious inheritance. Amen. Can we get a bigger amen in this house? Woo! Say hi to someone next to you, and we'll continue on with the night.
Well, you all just look uh, beautiful tonight. Who is uh, just full of expectation? Uh, who, who, uh, who, can, who is experiencing the presence of Jesus tonight, even as we were worshiping? Yeah. yeah, he's here. This is his house. Heaven and earth are intermingled in this place tonight. I just love being here. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a good night. I get the privilege of uh, welcoming our guest minister tonight. Who has been here before when, when Richard's ministered at River House? Uh, who, who would say that you've had a life-changing encounter with Jesus through Richard Gordon? Wow. Wow. Uh, it says in the, the scriptures to honor a prophet in the name of a prophet, and you'll receive a prophet's reward. And I just want to stand up here and honor Richard as a prophet in the name of a prophet, not just to myself personally, but to this house. And one of the things that prophets do is they relate to us according to who we will be in the future. And I told Rich this today that his presence, he came into uh, my life and into the life of River House like six years ago. And the deposits that he's made, he has related to us as a more mature expression of who we were at the time. And it's, it's as if the Lord uses him to pull us into his plan and his vision of what the Lord sees. Uh, you know, it's like Jesus shed his blood, not just for where we were, but because of the vision that he saw of who we would become, that we would become a people compatible with him, a pure bride, mature sons and daughters, right? And, uh, and, and prophets, and specifically Richard, has had, I, I couldn't even overstate the impact that this man has had. Uh, he is absolutely wild, um, but the more time I get to spend with him, I see the depth of the humility of his heart and the way that he has yielded himself and faithfully pursued Jesus for decades. And we tonight, as we choose to honor, and I just, I just as the pastor of this house, I want to just invite all of you to open your hearts and to honor not just Richard, but the Christ in Richard, that Jesus could minister, that Jesus the prophet could minister whatever he would want to do to us tonight and pull us into the future that is in the heart of God for each one of us. Yeah? So I just want to invite us all to stand and honor this wonderful prophet and man of God to minister to our house. Good night tonight. <laughs> oh, why don't you just open your hands? Oh. And Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we love you. You are the one. Now. Our hearts adore only you. Oh, Jesus, we love you, and oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Oh, Jesus, we love you, and oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. And Jesus, we love you. And so how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Adore you, oh Jesus, we love you. And oh, how I, oh, how I love you. And you are the one our hearts adore.
God, I know this is going to be a very significant night. And I just, I come humbly before you and I surrender my life again. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life I live now, I live through the Son of God. God, I know people are not looking for a man, but they're looking for the Son of Man. This is going to be a great night. <laughs> Thank you, God. Oh, it feels like I'm home. This place is home for me. So turn to someone next to you and say, Welcome home. <laughs> oh. Turn to someone next to you and say, We built this together. <laughs> oh man I love this place so much again if I've got to be part of uh, if you've got to be in a meeting here with me before just give me a big wave if you can <gasps> look at all my friends do you remember the time I came I think it was two years ago when I said I'm going to prophesy over every person in the room do you remember that and I went around and, until midnight. <laughs> just chat, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. <laughs> Who was here that night? Just lift your hand. My goodness, eh? That was a good time. <laughs> Jordan was sitting in the front and he was just shaking his head. He was like, oh my word, we're going to be here till midnight. That was a good time. I want to take you a little of the story of uh, how I got here. Uh, me and Robin did school together in DSSM Redding, California. Why don't you stand up, Robin? <laughs> and when we did uh, BSSM uh, school together, she was one of the most standout students. She was like one of the most dynamic leaders. She would walk in the room, open her mouth, and it was like everyone would listen. There's always been a leadership grace on your life. There's always been a midwife kind of birthing anointing on your life to bring, whoa. <laughs> anointing on your life to birth things. And it took a woman to birth a movement. And the roots of this house literally are sitting in front of me. And I just am so privileged and honored to be in the same room as you back then, those six, seven, seven years ago, and uh, maybe it was eight, and then uh, she took a risk and invited my wife to come to a women's gathering here six years ago, and she, I said, could I come too? And they were like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so I came along, and they threw me on a panel with uh, John Bottles, <laughs> Boise's Most Wanted, and, uh, uh, and Jordan, and I don't know why they had John there because he was, look at that, my wife's FaceTiming me right now. Um, why don't we just answer it? <laughs> hey, babe. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm preaching right now. Right now. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Do you want to say I love you so much. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so they invited her to come, not me. And that's, uh, she was my ticket in here. So I came and she did the women's conference. And I remember walking in here, you know, and man, you guys are bougie. I was like, the women's conference was the coolest women's conference ever. It was like, there was decorations all over. It was like, these people are dressed to the nines. I was like, man, I like this place. Turn to someone next to you and say, I like this church. <laughs> 
And they took a risk on me and they got me to preach at their Sunday services. We had three in a row and they kind of just bled into each other as the Holy Spirit started to move and people started getting touched by the power of God. Some for the very first time. If you were there six years ago and you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and power, just raise your hand so I know. Just keep it up. Just like those were some wild moments. I remember that service was wild. People weeping on the ground. And uh, it, was, it was beautifully messy. And, uh, but Jordan was just loving it. He was like, yeah. <laughs> and nervous at the same time. I remember how nervous you were. <laughs> Look at us now, Jordan. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to fast forward about two years ago. I came to do their elders retreat. And I came away with the elders. And uh, I remember Jordan had been on a sabbatical. And he was coming back. And they were all nervous, you know. All the leaders, you don't know this, but they were all nervous, like, is he going to come with a whole new plan? <laughs> like, everyone was like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? And, and we came there, and we had the best time ever. The presence of God came in the most beautiful way. We were laughing on the ground as the Lord was releasing nuts from heaven just over the team, and it was just so beautiful and wild, and something got sparked in that team those two years ago, and uh, was that when I prophesied, of, I said I'm going to prophesy to every person? Was that the same time? That was crazy. <laughs> and at that time, I, I, I get into these weird prophetic flows. How many people know that God, in the old days, God spoke through prophets, but these days he speaks through his son, Jesus, which is in Hebrews. And uh, I believe that God still speaks today. Turn to someone next to you and say, God still speaks today. And I remember I started prophesying over Jordan. And I remember started saying, and I see the Lord adding to your family. I see almost like it's an addition, almost like a child. And I see it coming in the month of, was it was June? The month of June and the Lord is gonna add to you. And they're freaking out, they're not pregnant. Literally, they fall, end up falling pregnant. They end up having the baby in the month of June. And uh, it being this like birthing moment. And I, you know when like you give a word and you're like, whoopsie. <laughs> I remember um, praying for uh, Rachel Provost. I don't know if she's here. Are you here, Rachel? Somewhere. Oh, there you are. I remember praying for you. Was it that night six years ago where you got touched by the power of God? Six years ago when I came in one of those services, she gets touched by the lightnings and the power of God for the first time. And then she ends up in Bethel in BSSM. And she had been struggling with an autoimmune disease. And again, I pray for her and the power of God touches her and she goes for a run for the first time and I don't know how long. She goes for a run the next day, totally healed of, her, of, of that condition. And then I... And then I remember, is that your mom sitting next to you? So good to see. I remember uh, sharing your story when I was here, probably, was it two years ago? And I remember calling your mom up to the front I remember you getting filled with the lightnings and the power of God for the first time right up here, and the power of God touched you right up front. So that was a moment right there. Give it up for Rachel's mom. I love her. <laughs> Rachel was so funny. She was like, uh, because her mom added me on Instagram, and her mom's like just the best person ever. She sends me DMs all the time. I just love you. You're just wonderful. And Rachel, Rachel was like, don't worry about my mom. She's new to social media. I'm like, bring it all on. I love it. <laughs> I really believe God's going to mark you today. Remind me of your name, Rachel's mom's name. Julia, I believe God's going to touch you radically today. So I'm excited for that. Um, and uh, while I've been here, I remember uh, speaking life into the leadership team, speaking life into this church, and it feels like God had uh, knitted me together with this church to the point where I was like, I started saying to the leadership team, it feels like we built this together. <laughs> and they, they were like, well, kind of, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it does, it feels like we built this together. I just want to honor a couple people. Could David and Ellie stand? Yeah. 
Keep standing. <laughs> this couple went fly fishing yesterday, and while she was casting the fly fishing uh, reel, he, she, her back was turned to him, and he dropped onto one knee, and he proposed to her just yesterday. <laughs> wow. Man, can you stretch your hands out to them and bless their marriage to be? God, we thank you for this couple. We thank you for a couple that is pursuing Jesus. The very first thing they did after getting engaged was they came to the Gen Z night and counter night. I declare the first thing you did as you committed to a marriage to each other, as, uh, as engagement to each other, the first thing you did was pursue God. And I prophesy that your life will be one of pursuing God for the rest of your days. And it will be an inspiration to your friendship group and an inspiration to your parents. God's hand is upon you in a special way. Oh, bless them. Why don't you give them a big clap? So, ladies, just a warning. If a guy asks you fly fishing, there's something up. <laughs> Could uh, Jacob and Brittany stand very quickly? <laughs> I have been amazed by learning your love story, and I think your love story is one of the most beautiful, uh, unorthodox stories, and I believe that you are carrying something for the younger generation in this church, and not just you, Brittany, but Jacob, you too, and it's a, a pair, there's like this anointing where both of you, both of you are gonna steward a move of God on a Gen Z generation. I see God trusting you, and it's no coincidence you have the craziest, wildest style, that God's gonna trust you to steward the old and bring in the new, just as you stewarded, uh, just as you wear these old clothes, but you represent something of the new, Jacob. Just as Paul the apostle, he presented the new covenant through bringing the Old Testament and then presented the new, just as Jesus came and presented the gospel by presenting the old covenant and presented the new, I see the Lord using you to take the new people of this church. And I see the new, I'm talking about the younger generation and bringing them into the forefront and bright lights. And God has gonna use you in a significant way, Jacob, to link the old and the new, just like you've done with your clothes. Just like you've done with your clothes, linking the old and the new. And I see you having great favor with the grannies in the church too. And God just anointing you for the young and the old, old, old. Just like your clothes. And so God, we thank you for the old clothes that he wears. We thank you for these old clothes that the new people and the young people love. Okay, why don't you just turn someone next to you and say, I love Jacob. <laughs> Oh, man. And uh, Johnny, Nikki, Violet, Olivia, and Levi, why don't you quickly stand? <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> why, church, why don't we just celebrate these guys very quickly? <laughs> wow. Well, keep standing. Nikki, I wanna publicly say you're an amazing mother. There is a leadership grace on your life and a mothering grace on your life that is needed in this community and God loves who you are, absolutely adores you. And uh, uh, Johnny, you have been a godsend for this church. You have been a godsend for this church and I believe that God has sent you as a gift here and your whole family is a gift to this community. And you operate as dad, you operate as, uh, as like, young, like a young child at the same time, that's like youthful, like I wanna discover more. There is such a grace on your life to bring safety, love, and you are supposed to be a, such a, like it's knitted into the fabric of this community. And uh, I just wanna honor Levi, Olivia, and, uh, and Violet. You guys are forerunners for this next generation. You guys are forerunners for this next generation. 
And God's hand is upon you, and God's going to use you in a very powerful way. And I don't know if you guys remember last year when I was here, and Violet was in the front. If you remember, give me a wave. Look at all Violet, we're going to make you squirm right now. Everyone look at Violet, make her a little bit awkward, make her feel a little bit awkward. So if you remember, uh, Violet gets filled with the Holy Spirit, 11-year-old, under power the day before. And, uh, and then at the service, I bring her up and I say, tell the people what's happening to you. And she starts to say, it feels like electricity moving from my body. And so then I end up giving her the microphone and I ended up walking behind her and just whispering in her ear what to do. I'd never done it before with anyone. And I remember Violet right up here, uh, she, I would say, just tell the person over there that the fire of and she would go, the fire of God is on you over there. <laughs> Boom, as the power of God started moving. And there were just bodies all over as Violet started to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why don't we just give it up? That 11, now 12 year old is a fire breathing. <laughs> Keep standing. Olivia over there. Olivia, she was six years ago. When my wife first came here, Olivia, my wife went to Olivia and said, come around with me and pray. And Olivia would come around and pray and people were getting slain in the spirit all over. Olivia was actually the one that sat with my wife and prayed for Rachel Provost when she got filled with the power of God for the first time. And Olivia was sitting with her on the ground. And the same thing happened. Uh, my wife pulled her around and then I pulled Violet around Leave our watch out. <laughs> Just having a laugh. And I'll share the story because it's a family story, but Nikki has a dream. And Nikki has a dream that she, her daughter gets filled with the Holy Spirit at Bethel Open Heavens Conference last year. I come to the church a week or two weeks before and she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. But they've already bought tickets and organized the whole trip. So they arrive at Open Heavens. I didn't actually, I can't remember if I knew if I didn't know, but it was a surprise to me. I'm preaching at Bethel's Open Heavens Conference and there on the front row is Violet and Olivia and, uh, and Nikki and uh, Johnny there. I can't remember, were you there, Levi? Yeah. Levi was there too. <laughs> Your time is tonight, Levi. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. And I say, Violet, you're here. So Violet jumps up on stage with me at Bethel and she starts to share the story of getting filled with the Holy Spirit and seeing people touched. And the way I ended the session at Bethel with, you know, it's filled, it's our most sold out conference, is I told every senior leader, pastor, come on the stage. Violet and Olivia are gonna pray for you to see you slain in the Spirit. And so they jump up and they start laying hands and pastors all all over the whole stage of Bethel is covered in bodies as the power of God moves through this young lady over here. Why don't you give it up for these amazing queens over here? We built this together. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Um, can Bill and Jackie stand? Where's Bill and Jackie? Erica, is that right? Bill and Erica. Sorry, I've written down Bill and Erica. Where are you guys? He's in kids' class. Bless him right now. What a good guy. Erica, why don't you just open up your hands? And is that Addie next to you? Oh, Addie, so lovely to see you. I remember praying for you last year, Addie, and the power of God touched you and the lightnings of God moved. How old are you, Addie? She's seven. I remember when you were six, the power of God touched you, and God is moving upon you right here. God, thank you so much for this amazing family. I see you as a pillar in this church. I see you as a pillar in this church. And I see God celebrating who you are and what you carry. And he adores and loves you. Church, can we just celebrate this amazing family over here? Is uh, Kenny and Haley here? <laughs> uh, what God is doing in the youth at the moment is remarkable, absolutely remarkable. There is a fire inside that youth group. Last night was 
unreal. There is a fire that you are stewarding. And Kenny, I wanna say you're a brilliant leader. You're not just good at pickleball, you're a brilliant leader. <laughs> You're a brilliant leader, and there's a grace on your life to raise up a generation, both you and Haley. And I just see God celebrating you, and what will, God will deposit inside of the two of you will see the next generation move into their fullness. And God has a both-and story for you, a both-and story. It's not a Kenny story, it's a Kenny and Haley story. And I see you ushering in the next move of the young people in this church, and I'm just so thankful for you. Church, can we just give them a big clap for you? And then can a, a Benji and Haley stand? Where are they? Hey, there you are. When I was here last, they were just engaged, uh, but now they are married. Look at that, eh? And... Uh, I, I, I'm just gonna expose them because I love family and I love the stories of people, but Haley was the homecoming queen of her high school. <laughs> and is that the right homecoming queen? Yeah. yeah. So everyone go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know each other, but uh, uh, Benji was in the stands when she got announced as homecoming queen. And uh, God said, that's, that's your queen. And so... <laughs> There we go, they, now they're together. And I wanna say, I remember when I first came, Benji, there was a wrestle inside of you of um, what does it look like to lean fully into the things of the Spirit? And uh, I've watched you in humility become an authority in what it looks like to lean into the Spirit. And I wanna honor you are a righteous man and the righteous are as bold as lions. And because of your righteousness that you walk in, I see a boldness that you will carry and it will impact people. I see you speaking up and I see you preaching and I see you teaching and a boldness to come upon you, almost becoming more animated in your communication because of this boldness from righteousness that you have. And I'm a huge Benji fan, massive Benji fan, massive Benji fan. I've just got a couple more. I, I'm a, I love people. I am absolutely obsessed with people. You know that God chose not to house himself in a building, but God chose to house himself in people. He chose, this will be my home, a person will be my dwelling place. I used to have an ark of the covenant where the very presence of God dwelled on earth. Now, where my ark is, it is literally broken people. I am obsessed with people. I love them. They are the carriers of the glory of God. God doesn't fill churches, God fills church. That is what, God did not come so that he could preach a message, he came for people. He came to encounter his people. Uh, can Bo and Andrea stand? Yay! Why don't you give another big clap for them again? Woohoo! <laughs> they shared this with me. They actually I'll come I'll come to them. They're gonna share it. When they came last year, why don't you just share briefly from last year? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, last year uh, we came, w Richard was here. We'd only been here for a couple months. We moved from Texas last year, didn't know anyone here. And um, we came, we were here for the conference when Richard came. And the first night Richard said, I want you to think about something that, that you're telling yourself and the devil is trying to tell you. And then I want you to ask the Lord what he says about that thing. And then I want you to stand up. I'm gonna give ready a chance to stand up and, and shout out what God said is the truth. And before I even knew it, I just jumped up and... Um, and he said, yeah, go ahead. And, and I said, the Lord told me that I am called to be a minister of the gospel, and he has prepared a place for me. And that was hard for me to say because we were feeling like we didn't know a soul here, and it was, we were brand new. And we were asking God, where is our place, you know? And 
in the last year, the Lord has, has given us a home here and has made so many friendships and so many relationships, so many connections. He's made us house church leaders. He put us on the prophetic team. He's done all these things in one year, and it's just mind-blowing and amazing, and we're so, so grateful. We love this church. We love all of you so much, and thank you, Richard, for, for what you just gave us the opportunity to do. Yes. Give it up for Bone Andrea. Woo! Now, Andrea, you stand. This woman's special, eh? Stretch your hands out to tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us what it's been like being here. You know, I love people too. <laughs> I really do. And um, I think the hardest thing was just, you know, I listened to my husband in obedience when he said we were going to move. We'd been in one church for 18 years in our hometown. We were ready to go. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but... Um, I, I followed him in obedience, and it was, you know, a vision that the Lord had given him specifically to come to Idaho, and um, so we did it, and we left everything, and I just said, Lord, you're so good. I know you're going to be good to me, and you're going to bring us people, and I just felt like he said very specifically, there's a home for you, and there are people, and they have a connection, and you have a connection, and those two connections are going to meet. And I could see it from my belly, this plug. And that is exactly what happened. And it's because of this group of people here that is filled with the Holy Spirit and the love of Christ. And it <laughs> emanates out. And it was easy to make that connection with you guys. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Oh, she said, filled with the Holy Spirit, and I went down. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Eh? Oh, man. Um, and then, Jordan, Jackie, why don't you stand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> These have become some of my dear and close friends, and I love you guys. I'm borderline obsessed. I have a full leadership crush on you guys. You guys are so awesome, and there's an apostolic grace that rests on you. Uh, uh, my friend Julian Adams, who's recently been here, if you were here with Julian, give me a wave. Uh, he, he starts speaking about these guys and he lights up. He adores them. I believe he's the most anointed prophet on the earth and he just thinks the world of these guys and has recognized them as an apostolic couple and, and I, I just want to second and third and fifth and seventh that. You are an apostolic couple and you are some of the best leaders that I've got to run with in all the places I travel. Some of the most incredible leaders and you have a purity where you focus on the Lord, not just on building big church. You focus on people and presence. And it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I, if I wasn't at Bethel, I would consider coming and being part of your leadership team and being part of this church because I would just trust your leadership over my life. I would just trust to be part of your community and part. You guys are incredible leaders. Turn to someone next to you and say, I love the Jesus in them. <laughs> and Jackie, um, I'm going to get you to do something in a little bit, so you'll be great. There. <laughs> if you have uh, joined this church in the last year, I would love if you stood. If you've just joined the church in the last year, why don't you stand up very quickly, or you've been attending just within the last year, why don't you stand up? <laughs> Woohoo! That's amazing. Keep standing. <laughs> Keep standing. Keep standing. Is this your mom? No way. This is your mom. Wow. <laughs> I love, I love your daughter. She is just the best. She's my favorite CPA. Oh, that's, what's your name? Nita. Nita, is that right? Oh, she's so wonderful. No, keep standing. Keep standing. Let the people see. Let the people see. I just want to thank you for saying yes to this community. 
this is a very special place. This is an incredible church that loves Jesus and loves people. And I, I, I wanted to honor people that have changed and impacted my life. But uh, I wanna, as a, as a prophetic act, I wanna say you're, be, you're here, but your life is about to get so transformed. So transformed. I adore this house. Absolutely adore this house. I have the privilege of getting to travel a lot. This is one of my favorite places in all of the world. This house is a very special house. So why don't you give these people that have joined just a big clap. <laughs> and you can sit. <laughs> and if you are here and it's your, and, uh, and this will be probably your first service with me then, I'm very excited for the power of God to touch you. So excited. Uh, and then last night, um, we had a crazy wild encounter night with Gen Z. When they asked me to come, I felt God say, I want you to gather all those that are 26 and under. And, uh, and then I asked Brittany and she said, we can do that. Thank you, Brittany. And uh, we gathered them and there was this moment last night. Uh, who was there last night? Just give me a big wave. <laughs> you are not 26. <laughs> You've got to have a little more hair to be 26. So again, just lift your hand if you're there last night. And there was this moment of impartation that happened. Just, it was unreal. <laughs> and the Lord, they, she, the Lord had all the women come to the front, and uh, Jackie ended up putting, laying her hand upon every person that came to the front. And, you know, I sat with Randy Clark, and he started to share with me, is that Micah? Good to see you. Wow, long time. <laughs> it was about eight years since I've seen you. Wow. And, uh, and, and uh, Randy Clark sat with me, and he started to explain to me about how, uh, what an apostle is. And he started to say that when, uh, if you study Acts, the apostles will lay hands and people will be filled with the Holy Spirit. They will lay hands and they will, gifts will be unlocked and the spiritual gifts will be unlocked. They will lay hands and people will be made well. The sick will recover. And he started to show me this is a mark of an apostolic gift. When the Gentiles had received the gospel, but they hadn't received the power and the Holy Spirit, they asked for the apostles to come so they could lay hands and, sin, and the, impart the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And so all the women rushed to the front, and I say, Jackie, come here! Because Julian's been telling me how there is such an apostolic grace on Jackie. And, uh, and then I said, Jackie, you're going to lay hands on all these people. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> But the lightnings of God came into Jackie's long fingers. And the lightnings of God started to move through her to the point where they that my team was carrying Jackie around. At one stage, Jackie was like this, and she was getting carried horizontally as we started laying hands upon people, and God just started moving through her. I want you to stand, and I want to honor you, the apostolic grace on your life, Jackie. Why don't we just clap right now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Jackie, come here, come here, come here. John Bottle, Boise's Most Wanted, said to me, I've never seen so many bodies on the ground. I've never seen so many bodies all over the ground. Uh, that was a moment. God is anointing uh, the lead, this leader in the church as an apostolic grace and gift. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just asked you to come up. You should just, you should just share what, what do you think God is doing inside of you. And you're going to say, I don't know, but here we go. <laughs> I know it was God because I surely couldn't have done that. I just felt someone once told me that if there's like one hungry in the room, like he'll come. And like the hunger that is in this youth and young adult generation across the world, across America was touching my heart. And 
I mean, I was about to leave, and then Richard heard a whisper, and that's how God speaks, right? He whispers, and, and when you obey, and then I just trust this man, like I, I really do, and so I just said, okay, and then his team is here, and I just yielded, and um, power, like I've never experienced physically, started moving through my body to the point where I was like, all right, I've seen this in other people. To be honest, I've judged it, and I haven't understood it. <laughs> And then it's happening to me, and I'm not doing this over. <laughs> and I'm like, I wouldn't do this. I don't want the attention. I don't want the show. But I want God, and I want what he has for our house, and I want what he has for the future. I want what he has for this nation. <laughs> so I just said yes, and they carried me, and my shirt was lifting up, and I was like, Jesus, cover me. <laughs> And he believes all things. And my parents are watching on live stream, and I love you, and I can't explain it. But get him, God! <laughs> oh, man. If Jackie's parents are watching right now, God, I pray that your presence would fill them right now. I thank you for raising one of the God's best daughters. And God, I ask that you would mark her dad right now and you'd mark her mom. I thank you that there is a call of God upon her dad's life to know Jesus Christ and his resurrected power, that he would know the power and the love of Jesus like never before. And there's a righteous justice button that I believe your dad has. And God is gonna use you for social justice issues. God, would you anoint her dad in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, man, that's a good thing. Let me tell you what God does often in leadership, it always trickles down. So when a leader gets touched, I just get so excited because I know what's gonna happen on the trickle down. So turn to someone next to you and say, the Lord is gonna mark you with power. <laughs> could, I, could I get someone to come play keys for me? Uh, um, oh, there we go. Turn to someone next to you and say, I believe that you're going to encounter Jesus radically tonight. Just, uh, just put a hand on someone's head and just say, I see the fire of God in your head. <laughs> Turn to someone next to you and say, there is a window of God that is opened for you to step into encounter. Whew, I feel the Lord so strong. Whew, God. Wow. Put your hand on your heart and say this after me. I am a gate. And I swing wide this gate. And I ask that the King of Glory would come in. I invite you as I share to simply just encounter Jesus. You can sit with your eyes closed, your hands open. I believe Jesus Christ is going to encounter many people in power tonight. I believe Jesus Christ is going to touch people like Bo and Andrea, and it's gonna change the trajectory of their lives. I believe Jesus Christ is gonna touch people like Rachel Provost, and the destiny of her future would be changed. I believe the Lord wants to mark people like an 11-year-old Violet, and she would get touched by the fire only to see senior pastors from across America and the world slain in the spirit. I believe the Lord wants to touch people that have been struggling with sickness and disease. The Lord would want to touch you and set you free from a life of pain. Those that have been struggling with a broken heart, that they would come and get radically set free. There was a man that came to the meeting last year. He drove five hours to be in this church and he dragged his parents, his unbelieving parents to come too because he was friends with me through literally the internet. And he sat on the left-hand side over here, his dad reeking of smoke and his mom doubting. And I remember walking up to him and he gets touched by the power. And I went to his dad and I said, we, can I pray for you? He said, okay. And as I prayed, the electricity of heaven touched him and he started shouting, it is real, it's real, it's real. 
I turned to his mom and the mom is crying and crying. This is last year when I was here. And I turned to her and I put a hand on her and pray for the power of God to come. And she gets touched by the power of God and she shouts, starts shouting, it's real, it's real, it's real. They drove back home after that meeting late at night and the dad and the mom gave their lives to Jesus in the car with the son. God, I thank you that you would do miraculous things in this church, God. Jesus of Nazareth was in Cana of Galilee. It was a wedding and there was people all over at this wedding. Jesus' mother was there and all his friends were there and they were celebrating and they celebrate with wine and the wine runs out. And so Jesus' mother goes to Jesus and says, the wine's run out. Almost implying like, what are you gonna do? And Jesus turns to her and says, woman, it is not my hour. See, it's interesting in the Jewish culture, the one who provides the wine at the wedding is the bridegroom, the husband. After this, Mary says, do whatever he tells you to do to the servants, whatever Jesus tells you to do to the servants. So the servants go and they draw these pitchers. He said they fill the, the ceremonial jars filled with water right to the brim. And then they take pitchers and they dunk and they fill up the pitcher and they start to draw from it and they go to the master servant and they start to pour out of these pitchers that should have been water, they start to pour wine. And the master servant is like, what is happening? Wine just came out. But he wasn't surprised that wine came out because he didn't know they were drawing from water. He was surprised because the wine was so good. Turn to someone next to you and say, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And, uh, and so he gets so excited that he goes to the bridegroom, the wine provider, and he says, why did you save the best wine for last? And then it says, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. What happened when Jesus became the one provider, he revealed himself as bridegroom. He revealed himself as the bridegroom to the bride. And what he did in that moment, I love it. God chose the revealing of Christ as the Messiah. He chose it to be a sign and a wonder. Water to wine. Send someone next to you and say, you're about to have a water to wine moment. Water to wine. In John chapter four, it's the second sign in the book of John. The book of John is, the first half is called the book of signs. The second half is called the book of glory. Seven signs that reveal Jesus as Messiah. And then the book of glory is Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension as glorification. And in chapter four, uh, it's Jesus is going, chapter four, verse 48. Jesus is about to heal a nobleman's son. And these words come out of his mouth. Unless you people see signs and wonders, how will you believe? And I always thought that this was a frustrated Jesus. Frustrated the people that did not have faith. I always thought, no, this is a frustrated Jesus saying, unless you see the big things, the signs and the wonders, how will you believe? I, and I started to realize, no, this, this wasn't a frustrated Jesus. This was a methodology of Jesus. Unless you see signs and wonders, how will you believe? And I started realizing that signs and wonders 
are not the dessert of the gospel. It's not the dessert of the gospel. It is the meat of the gospel. Signs and wonders is the medium in which God chose to reveal Jesus to the earth. He was born a virgin, born of a virgin. His name was revealed through a dream. He was discovered by a star, revealed by one, raised from the dead, ascended on a cloud. The way God chose to reveal Jesus Christ as Messiah was through signs and wonders. Unless you see signs and wonders, how will you believe? He could have done it in different ways, but he chose the miraculous to be the revealing methodology. Man enough to spit, God enough to heal the blind. Man enough to get tired and hungry, but God enough to walk on water and calm a storm. Man enough to eat fish with them and God enough to walk through a wall and stand with them. The way God chose to reveal his son as Messiah was through signs and wonders. Oh, God has gripped my heart by this. Gripped. Signs and wonders are not to show a powerful ministry. It is to reveal that he is Messiah. <laughs> signs and wonders is not to show the power of, of God through a person. It's to reveal that the king is not dead. The king is not dead. He's alive and amongst us. No one can manufacture a sign. No, uh, no, no heightened, like, increase of excitement. Nothing can manufacture a demonstration of the dead being raised, the sick being healed. It is a demonstration of God. I would propose that those that get filled with the power of God, that is a sign and a wonder. When you see an 11 year old touched by the lightnings of God, going up into heaven, experiencing heaven, let me tell you, you can, to keep the attention of an 11-year-old for 20 minutes is difficult. It's a sign and a wonder. I've been interviewing people for years now, asking them about their encounter, and all of them will say this. It was a moment where my eyes were closed and I felt something. It was a tremble, it was a tear, it was whatever it was. And, but they all say the same. But when I got up, everything was different. Everything was different. Everything was different. Turn to someone next to you and say, you need a touch from Jesus. If you're a six-year-old like Addie, who got touched by Jesus right over here when I was last year, or if you are a little bit older, where's my friend, Carolyn, where's Carolyn? Or if you like Carolyn, who I remember I called up all the grannies last time I was here and they all just, all the white haired lady were getting slain in the spirit when I was here. You need a touch from Jesus. If you've been a Christian for years and years, I don't think you need some Gnostic secret teaching to get you into high levels of power or experience. You need Jesus Christ, the, the narrow gate, the narrow door, the one that ch children can accept and children can come into a heavenly experience. You need the Christ. Turn someone next to you and say, you need Jesus. <laughs> I believe that when people have an encounter with God, it's a sign and a wonder sign and a wonder can't make it up I remember a, I remember I got invited to Hawaii to uh, share uh, introduce the church to the Holy Spirit power and the miraculous 
I'd met the guy once before, but I felt God say this was one of my most significant meetings. And so I came, uh, he asked me, would you come to our Christmas service and introduce our church, the Holy Spirit? And so I said, yes, I got on a Zoom call with him and I said, okay, what do you want? And he said, well, I want, we want our church to experience the power of God, the miraculous and the infilling of the Spirit for the first time. We've been going for 22 years. We feel we're supposed to lean in. I said, that's my jam. Come on. Woohoo! Jesus wants this. And I said, okay, so how much time do I have? And he said, well, you got 15 minutes to do it. And I, was, I laughed just like you laughed. And he didn't understand why I was laughing. And he said, why are you laughing? What do you need? I said, I need more time. So they went away and prayed and they came back and they said, I could have 20 minutes. <laughs> so I said, okay, great, I'll come. So they flew me out all the way there for 20 minutes. And I get there and they start with their ministry team. They've got a ministry team of 60 people. And they say, we've never had upfront ministry before, but we felt to have upfront ministry for people to rush the front. Okay, can you train them on how to pray for people to have an encounter and get healed? I said, yeah, sure. So I get there and I say, you guys know how to pray. Put your hand on someone, you say Jesus in Jesus' name. What you need is an encounter if you wanna release an encounter with God. And so I said, we're gonna pray for people who are touched by the power of God. And I didn't know it was everyone's first time. So one by one, boom, 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 the power of God starts touching these people. One of the, it's, he's a very well-known movie producer on the island. He comes forward, he gets touched by the lightnings of God. And, and he's on the ground shaking like a fish and everyone gets so like, oh, I'm like, oh, this is great. Another lady, she's a four square itinerant minister. She's traveled to over 40 countries preaching the gospel and ministering for the four square movement. And she comes forward, pray for her and the lightnings of God touch her. She goes out under the Holy Spirit for a good half an hour. She gets up, I didn't know this, but she said, I've only had a touch by the power of God once when I was 17. This is the first time and I'm 67 now, 50 years. And probably about 30 of them get radically touched by the power of God. The teaching pastor that teaches every Sunday at the church, he walks out offended and uh, he comes back a little later because the Holy Spirit told him to come back. And so I'm very excited and they're all excited but incredibly nervous for Christmas service tomorrow. So Christmas service comes and uh, you know, if you're part of an evangelical church, Christmas is your Super Bowl Sunday. You pack the place out, you do your best presentation and you hope that people come back the next week. And the place was packed, well over a thousand people they were expecting, but on the drive there, uh, it's pouring with rain. So much rain that if I went from here to the doorway, I would be drenched in these dreadlocks we weighing like 12 kgs. They're just drenched in water. And as the senior pastor next to me, my dear friend, he starts calling and canceling the pony rides, canceling the jumping castle, canceling the obstacle course that they had prepared. And he turns to me, he says, well, I think you'll have more time. <laughs> and so we get there and they do the most incredible worship. They've got two Grammy Award winning uh, people on their team and they do this amazing preach, Christmas style preach. And then he gets up and he says, okay, as a church, I felt like we're gonna lean into the things of the spirit. Turn to someone next to you and say, we're about to lean in. And he said, I'm gonna bring my friend. He moves in signs, wonders and miracles and the power of God and the miraculous. Welcome up Richard. And I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> The place is packed out. He thought 300 would come because of the rain, but it's well got well over 1,000, maybe 1,200, packed out in the place. And the pastors are so nervous and so excited. I get the different, I get that movie producer and the itinerant minister to share their story of what God had done to them. And I said, I believe God's gonna do it again. Uh, they had never ever had people rush the front for prayer and ministry. They'd never had a miracle in the 22 years of their church. And uh, I started to uh, share a little bit of my story. And then I jumped on down and I prayed for one person and they got filled with the Holy Spirit in front of the auditorium and the whole room went. <gasps> and so I was like, here we go. The gates are open. <laughs> and I jumped back on stage and I said, if you need a touch from God, if you need a miracle in your body, I want you by faith to get up and I want you to rush the front. And my pastor friend thought that 100 people may come because they'd never done anything like this before. 
and 700 people started rushing the front. 700 people started rushing the front. And for the next three hours, there was miracle after miracle after miracle. And people were getting slain in the spirit, left, right, and center, as these locals were praying for the locals. There was a lady with a tumor in her neck, about like, and this local put her hand on the tumor, and the tumor dissolved right under her hand. And she came and testified the next week. They saw their first miracles that Christmas service. First miracles. I've been going back every three months or so, and I just got back three weeks ago, and they said, you know, Rich, we saw our first miracles in December. Now, every weekend, we see miracles in our church. Every weekend. God is so good. Signs and wonders are not the dessert, they are the revealing of the Messiah. The revealing that He is alive and not dead. I was in Celaya, Mexico, and uh, uh, the most dangerous city in the world, according to Google. And it was doing my first crusade, it was a couple months ago. And while I was there, uh, it's the most dangerous city because it's the center of the drug cartel. It's the heart of Mexico where all the cartel um, sit. And uh, we got there and I was so nervous. I'd never done a crusade. So I started um, listening to Reinhold Bonnke and trying to like work out what, what you do. <laughs> I was like listening to Reinhold Bonnke and all these evangelists like, okay, I'll just do that, I'll do that. And, and I phoned my wife so nervous and she said, Rich, you just be you. Uh, you've traveled all over and uh, you just be you. The same thing seems to happen. So I thought to myself, you know what? I wanna see the power of God touch people. I wanna see children touched by the power of God. We're gonna see miracles and then we're gonna see salvation. And while I was there, uh, the place fills up maybe 5,000 and El Trisha was there with me um, and one of my team. Could my team all just come up to the stage very quickly? Trish and Nicole to just come up quick. And uh, um, they came and I started to share, and I started to share the story about Hawaii, about these people that uh, who started rushing the front. And while I am sharing the story, because I told them we we're gonna put the power of God on display, the miraculous on display, and then if you've seen the power, you've seen the miraculous, you will then have to believe. You'll be met with this, this juncture point where you will need to choose to believe or not. And uh, while we start praying for the power of God, I start saying, I start praying for the power of God and this gust of wind fills the stadium and people start getting touched by the power of God in the most crazy way. But 1,500 had rushed the front to receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. And then I, this lady was in a wheelchair right in front of me and she gets up out of her wheelchair and she starts to walk for the first time. The, and I draw attention to the stadium and the place erupts with praise. And then um, we went off to the miraculous and so many people got healed, physically healed, hundreds. Hundreds got healed. And then I said, now you've seen the power, now you've seen the miraculous, you must believe. If you need Jesus, I want you to rush the front. And we found out a week later that four cartel leaders had rushed the front and given their lives to Jesus. Their wives too gave their lives to Jesus, gave their lives in the most dangerous city in the world, uh, let me tell you, God can move anywhere. I remember calling the children up and there were hundreds of children in the front and the power of God started touching these 10 year olds, nine year olds, eight year olds. Oh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I believe it is the power of God to all who believe to salvation. Turn someone next to you and say, you need a touch from God. Um, So tonight's gonna be a nice wild night. So, you know, just get ready. It's gonna be really great. <laughs> uh, and then I just went, got back from Brazil to a month ago. And uh, I, something unlocked inside of me. Something just unlocked inside of me. 
and I saw hundreds and hundreds of miracles every single night. There wasn't a night that didn't go by that we did not see tumors dissolve, where tumors would just dissolve and like just literally come off people. There was a meeting, the glory was so thick. This person felt a discomfort in their stomach. They went to the bathroom and they passed the kidney stone with no pain, no pain. Doctors say that uh, if you pass a kidney stone, it should shred your urethra. It's the version of a man giving birth and no pain. It was literally two days later in a meeting, the same, the glory came and literally someone, a, a guy felt in discomfort. He went and he passed the kidney stone too. He came back and was like, no pain, no pain. There was a lady who got, came in with leukemia and she had leukemia. She'd been diagnosed and she got wheeled in. By the end of the night, she was jumping up and down and running around and, uh, and, and I was like, what is happening? She said, you don't understand. I was diagnosed with leukemia. I had a blood transfusion last week. It was the first time that I felt no pain and uh, energy, but then it all went. And tonight it feels like I got another blood transfusion. I got a, a message from her two weeks later that she went to the doctor and they can't understand, but all of her cancer is gone and she is 100% healed. There was a man with a heart stint, a piece of metal put in his heart to help it keep going. And he had heart capacity of 40%. And while he was, his wife was telling him, come to the meeting, come to the meeting. And she, because she was one of my students, Portuguese students, while in Brazil, she ends up praying for him. And right before the meeting, he goes to the doctors to do a checkup. And the doctor looks for the heart stint. And he's like, I don't know what's happened, but I can't find it. The doctor ends up checking six times for the heart stint and the doctor's so confused. So the doctor tests his heart levels and he's at 100% heart capacity. So now the Global Medical Research Institute has got his medical files and are doing a deep dive investigation into how this is all possible. There was a, a lady there that had no cartilage in her left knee and she comes up on stage and she's jumping around and I'm like, she's got, she, I've got full mobility in my leg, full mobility. I'm like, are you sure? Bring your knee here, let me feel. So I put my hand on her knee because she's jumping up and down. It was bone on bone. And literally I feel cartilage in her knee and she says, all the pain is gone. All the pain is gone. Turn to someone next to you and say, wow, Jesus. And we saw miracle after miracle after miracle. So fascinating. There were so many miracles of ladies with lumps on their breast. The, the lumps would just disappear in the glory, in the glory. There was a lady, I started sharing these testimonies and there was a lady, I asked everyone, if you have pain in your body or a diagnosis, put your hand there, we're gonna pray. As we started to pray, fire started coming on her abdominal area. She had not had a period in two years. And she had a large cyst on her ovary. She put her hand there, fire came. The very next morning, she had her first period in two years. And she went to the doctor the end of the week to get that, that ovary, the large cyst off her ovary taken off. And the doctor scanned and was like, I don't know what happened to you, but that ovary, that uh, cyst on your ovary is not there anymore. God totally healed it. That is, Jesus is the Messiah. Turn to someone next to you and say, my God is not dead. My God is alive. My God is alive. Just on Friday, just about, what, what is Friday? Friday was eight days ago, nine days ago. Just on Friday, I was in Seattle. There was a lady that had heard two miracle stories of my ministry. There was one woman that came into my meetings two years ago. She was brought in. She had braces on every part of her body. She had a disease in her tendons where she would dislocate her hips 10 times a night. She would sit in a car and her shoulder would dislocate. She had something called EDS, Enlop Dundrum Syndrome, and it was a rare connective tissue disorder. She, had, uh, she came into the meeting. She had never run in 20 years. And we ended up praying for people to be touched by the power of God, lay hands on her. She starts to rattle and roll on the ground. She gets up and 15 minutes later, she's able to walk. And then about another 10 minutes later, I see her and she's running around the church, running around the church. 
just the craziest, wildest story. She's off now 20 prescription medications. She had 16 incurable diseases that are healed. She is able to run, walk, and she is a packer at Costco doing 15,000 steps a day on her step count. And she's doing BSSM with us in Redding, California. So there's, and there's another lady who was given six months to live. She was wheeled into my meeting with a oxygen tank and a, and a, um, a, a wheelchair. And we prayed for the lightnings of God touched her. She had two incurable diseases on 40 prescription medications. The power touches her and she gets up and she starts to have no symptoms after getting off the ground of a touch from God. She goes to the doctor, they start tracking her case all her symptoms are gone. The doctor said this is impossible because this is a hereditary DNA disease. It comes, it'll never be out of your DNA. She said, test me, it's out. And they didn't believe her, so they tracked her. And then they finally tested her blood because she was showing no symptoms. And you know what? There was no trace of the disease in her DNA. No trace. Both those cases are currently uh, being researched by the Global Medical Research Institution where they take the medical files and they write a medical journal paper based on the before and the after of a God healing to be published. It'll take about another six months, but they have been walking fully healed for the one lady's four years and the other lady's two years. So this woman just on Friday night hears of the stories of the miracles. She has not left her house in five years except she went to the ER. She's been bedridden and wheelchair bound and she hears of the miracles so she decides to come to church. And she said, if Rich came, I think I'm just gonna give it a go. And so she came with her nurse and her father and she gets wheeled in. Was any of you guys with me? No, it was just me. And I'm sitting there and uh, uh, literally people getting healed all over. Boom, 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 miracle after miracle. And then um, I see this lady in a wheelchair. So I jumped down and I put my hand on her because she's crying already. Jesus is already touching her. And so then I pray for her and literally the lightnings of God start to touch her. The power, boom, boom, boom. She gets up and she starts to walk. And her dad and the nurse go crazy like, what? So she's excited. So I give her the microphone and she starts saying, there's life in my legs, there's life in my legs, there's life in my legs. And she starts to share the story of how she has been wheelchair bound five years and bedridden five years. It's just on Friday. And I, whenever something crazy like this happens, I always, I'm like an engineer, so I'm always like, are you sure? <laughs> so I said, is there someone here that's known her for five years or longer that can come and testify to this? And quickly her dad runs up and she takes the microphone. He says, he starts to cry, he says, my daughter, I've never seen her like this in over five years. And he starts to cry. She was so weak that she, her body did not have movement and she was so weak that she wasn't able to speak full sentences. And she's telling her story now and walking. And I'm, I'm like, what? And I said, is there anyone else? And the nurse comes and the nurse uh, comes and she says to me, Rich, this is a miracle. This lady, is uh, she could not speak full sentences and she could not move and now she is walking and speaking full sentences. Turn to someone next to you and say, Jesus is alive. <sighs> Jesus is the Messiah. Let me tell you, there is no God that can raise the dead. There is no other religion that can raise the dead. There is no one that power over the dead. Our, throughout all of uh, religion, there is no God that uh, professes that He has power to raise the dead. Our Christ, He is a God of signs and wonders, and that's the way God chose to reveal Him. I just feel hope filling the room. Hope filling the room for people that have struggled for years. Hope filling the room. Holy Spirit, I thank you that this is a sending house, that this is an apostolic house that would send people. And I ask God for an anointing of signs and wonders to come upon your people, a gift of signs and wonders to rest upon them, that Messiah Jesus would be revealed. Messiah Jesus would be revealed to your people. And God, you would anoint them with an increase of the miraculous. And I ask God that 
that there would be a mantle for signs and wonders released on this house. That this house would have a grace for signs and wonders. And would you open your hands right now across the house. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would anoint every person, every person, not just the leadership, every person to be revealers of the Messiah. God, I release a mantle for signs and wonders in this house. Signs and wonders in this house. And even as I prayed that, if you felt a fire or a stirring inside of you, I want you to stand to your feet as quickly as you can. Holy Spirit, we bless what you are doing. We bless what you are doing. We bless what you are doing. And if someone is standing, why don't you just go to them and bless what the Lord is doing. God, I ask for a grace for signs and wonders in this place that your glory would manifest through the saints, God. I ask for men and women of great faith, great faith, Lord. I see this house sending people to the east. I see this house sending people to the south. And I see teams going to places in America. And I see, Lord, releasing a gift of the miraculous through this house. God, I thank you for those with diabetes getting healed, those with cancer getting healed, those that have struggled for years with autoimmune diseases that would get healed, those that come in wheelchairs. God, there would be life to their legs, life to their bones. God, that apostolic grace to come upon, not just the leadership, but a house, that this house would be known as an apostolic house in the region, that people would come and there would be a demonstration of the Messiah King, the signs and wonders grace, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Matthias. Yes, God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Ghost. If you are part of the intercession team, I want you to come forward as quickly as you can. The prayer and intercession team, the prophetic team that we were with earlier. My team, can you come forward? I want you to lay hands on the prophetic team. Be proud of the intercession team. Just come in the front here quickly, 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 quickly. Holy Spirit, this is a house of prayer. This church was birthed out of a prayer meeting. This church was birthed out of a prayer meeting in a living room. Jackie, I need your hands to bless some people. This church was birthed out of a prayer meeting in a living room. God, I thank you for a fire that would come upon the prayer warriors. A fire that would come upon the prayer warriors in Jesus' name. That you would come and anoint them with your glory in Jesus' name. I need some catchers to come help me. Just help me out. God, we ask for your fire right now. That your baptism of the Holy Spirit would mark the intercessors of this house. Mark the intercessors of this house. Mark the intercessors of this house. God, we thank you for the forerunners. These forerunner intercessors, God. Would you pour out your glory? I declare that the mark of this house would be an apostolic house and a house of prayer. An apostolic house and a house of prayer. The Lord is on you in a powerful way right now. The Lord is on you in a powerful way right now. God, we ask that you would mark her with a radical grace to spring the heaven to earth, to bring heaven to earth more, God. Right now, someone behind it. Fire of gold, right here. The fire of gold, right here. The fire of gold, right here. The Baileys, I just recognize you with Elijah. And God, I thank you there's a greater glory coming to this house. Even as this boy was born, a greater glory was ushered in. God, I thank you that there is going to be a spirit of breakthrough that comes in the prophetic ministry. A spirit of breakthrough, even as Elijah represents a spirit of breakthrough, the John the Baptist, the Elijah spirit. I declare there's going to be a spirit of breakthrough that comes through the prophetic ministry because of this, this couple right here. Why don't you stretch your hands out to the intercessors right now? This church was birthed in a living room, a prayer room. This church was birthed in a living room, in a prayer room. This right here, this is your roots. This is your origins. People praying, asking God to come. Stretch your hands out and bless them with me right now. Holy Spirit, more. 
If they're blessed, we're blessed. If they're blessed, we're blessed. God, release your fire. If they're blessed, we're blessed. Release your fire on them right now. Release your fire, God. Release your fire, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. More, God. More, God. More, God. from you all the way just link hands right now that whole road just link hands hold hands hold hands hold hands hold hands hold hands all the way hold hands hold hands holy spirit i ask in jesus name and three your fire would rest upon them one two three the fire of god just upon them the fire of god just upon them god would you mark your people with your glory one touch a sign and a wonder of your fire touching right now your fire touching right now your fire touching right now god touch it touch it the lord is anointing your voice the lord's anointing your voice yes god fire god fire god everyone sing this with us sing with us with us Every voice. I want you to stand up very quickly. Or if you are 18 and younger or 20 and younger, if you're this section, I want to just open your hands right now. Church, God is doing something with the younger generation. This church was birthed out of millennials, but God's attention is upon a next generation to be touched by the power of God. All these guys over here, close your eyes right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that your fire would rest upon the youth of today. God, I ask God you would mark them with your glory, mark them with your fire. And even as I prayed right now, if you sense the Lord on you in a significant way, I want you to run to the front as quickly as you can. Chick-fil-A, come quickly, come quickly. And I want, if you sense the Lord on you, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. You come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. You keep standing, keep standing. Oh, oh fill this place. And Jackie, come with me. And Jacob, come with me. But in the front, come in front of them. Let's catch them. AJ, come and need some catchers to follow us. Holy Spirit, right now, the fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. We bless what you're doing, God. We bless what you're doing, God. Let's pray for him. This lady over here, the Lord is on you in a significant way. God, I ask your fire would rest on her right now. Oh, Holy Spirit, anoint her right now. I see God pulling from your stomach pain. And I see God anointing you. God, would you pour out your fire right now upon her in 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you for that day. Thank you for that day where I met her two years ago, God, and you set her apart, God, for you, God. Only for you, God, would you brand her so strong. Let this be a revivalist of our generation, God. I thank you for that seed sown two years ago, God, where I saw you grip her life, God. Would you grip her life again, God? Would you fill her with your fire tonight, God? A throne room encounter tonight, God. Shake your more God, more God. Let's bring in some of the youth over here. If you're part of the youth, come on stage with me here. Come here, come here. Yeah, come, come here, come here. I need you closer in. Let's see if we can. Come here, come here, come here. I need some youth up here. Come here, come here. There's a fire and a fervor I want on here. Thousands come, come, come. Thousands come, 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 come. I love it is the most beautiful. Oh, come, 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 come. You're doing great. Come right up. And just open your hands and just stay right here. Open your hands. I love it is the most beautiful. If you're in the church, I want you to raise your hands right now. This is the presence of God. This is not a demonstration of charismatic on display. This is the presence of God. The power of God is here. Oh God, we give you glory. This is a demonstration that the King is not dead. This is a demonstration that the King is alive in this place. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. I wish. Trish, can you come with me? Can you come with me? Yeah. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now. You turn me up just a little bit. God, I thank you so much right now just for the grace resting upon this woman. I thank you, God, you've called her to be a young prophetess. A young prophetess. God, I thank you that your grace would rest upon her right now. Could you give me a clap if you're part of this church? God, I thank you, Jesus, right now. The fire of God to rest upon her. God has set apart one. And what happened even in her mother's life, God says, I will heal you and I'll bring joy to her life. God, I thank you, Jesus, that you would mark her right now in Jesus' name. Your fresh fire, your fresh fire, your fresh fire. Come here. My friend, no, yeah, it's been so long. Close your eyes, open your hands. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Someone behind her. Someone just come behind her quickly. God, I thank you for your fire resting upon her. God says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. I ask for the miraculous signs and wonders grace to come upon her now. In Jesus' name, I speak of your blood. I speak of your mind. I speak of your heart and of your body. I declare in Jesus' name, the fire of God. The lightnings of heaven and the glory of God coming upon her right now. Come here, come here, come here. The fire of God and the lightnings of heaven. Put your hand on her stomach. Right from birth, God. From birth, from birth. And from the age 13, I see the Lord where there was something of trauma that entered from 13 on. God says, I'm bringing restoration, restoration, restoration. And I speak over the age 13 and I declare in Jesus' name, there is a stake in the ground and a breakthrough, God. I declare the Lord says of you, you are perfectly and wonderfully made. The power of God upon her right now, right through her timeline, right through her timeline from 13 on in Jesus' name, the fire of God, the fire of God, the lightnings. Keep praying. Thanks, God. Oh, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Thank you, God. You're so powerful. God, we anoint her voice. You put a call to her voice. And I say thank you, God, for the words that she's spoken, for the call that's on her life, God. The call that's on her life to preach the gospel. The call that's on her life to say, to put a stop and an end to child trafficking. Oh, thank you for the dream, the dream of justice, the dream to see other 
set free, God, and we just anoint that. We anoint that on her life and we ask for the fire to cover it and the blood of Jesus to cover her now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that your fire would rest on him right now. More, God. More, God. More on Chick-fil-A, God. The anointing of God resting upon him. God, would you anoint him to be an evangelist. I see a gospel call on your life for you to preach the gospel and to wreck people because of the boldness that you carry in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I pray that your fire would rest on him. That your fire would rest on you. Open up your hands. Holy Spirit, I thank you for a radical worship leader. One called, set apart. God, I ask to rest on me and my wife's life would rest on her life right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, fire upon him right now. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Fire, of God. Let's, uh, I need a little, even more space, if I can. Just a little more space. Just a little more, because I'm going to call some people for it. Thank you, God. Whoa, this is Levi. This is Levi. Hey, Levi, God is touching you right now. Guys, God is touching Levi right now with power. God is touching Levi right now. Look at this, church. Give a clap. Wow, look at this. Oh, Holy Spirit. This is a moment in the Spirit. The hand of God is upon this man. Oh, we joked earlier, but you were not joking. You would say, God, I'm going to put him on like a glove. The lightnings of heaven. And Levi, I speak over you. There's a teaching gift on your life. There's a gift to preach and to teach on your life. And God sees you as a leader. He sees you as a minister. There's a call upon your life that will set you apart. I ask in Jesus' name that there be an impartation of grace, an impartation of signs, wonders, and miracles. Your fire right now, God. Your fire right now, God. Your fire right now. God, would you sit on it? The glory of God marking him. The Lord says this is a turning point for you. This is a turning point for you. That there will be an anointing upon your life for miracles, like a healing grace. And God, I declare in Jesus' name that he is a leader in the marketplace and the ministry space. There's a both and grace for your life. God, anoint him, anoint him. I see an intelligence like that of your mom. And I see God anointing you with a great mind, a great mind, a great mind. Oh. Yes, God, thank you that this man is a pastor, God. He's called to be a pastor, God. We thank you that you've set the course of his destiny, God. And we thank you that the rumblings of revival are inside of this man, that he'll be a catalyst to this generation, God. We thank you that he will shepherd a movement that will leave a legacy in this generation. He's going to shepherd a movement and he's going to be the, one of the greatest pastors, one of the greatest pastors that shepherds a strong, strong movement, God. I bless this catalyst, God. I bless the fire, God. We say more fire, God. Would you mark him? Would you brand him tonight? Unshakable in the kingdom, God. Unshakable in the kingdom, God. Where's Jackie? Are you here, Jackie? And AJ. Jackie, uh, AJ had to go. Jackie and AJ, come forward if you're here. Oh, you do. You have a baby. Where's Jackie? Come quickly, quickly. Oh, you're with the baby. Look at all, both babies. Last time I was here, I prophesied it was a baby season. Look at that, eh? This is a moment right here. Give, give the Lord a clap. He's touching Levi. It's touching Levi. It's touching Levi. Okay, let's create a little bit of space in the front. Uh, I'm going to get these guys to lay hands because Jackie's carrying something at the moment. There's a fire and a grace on her life. Open up your hands if you're from the back, if you're in the front. Holy Spirit, I thank you. There is an anointing in the room for signs and wonders grace. An encounter grace and a healing grace. 
God, I thank you. This is not just hopeful talk, but you are the Messiah, God. You are the Messiah. And I thank you for the power of God that's moving through generations and a people right now. Uh, Rachel Provost, mom, why don't you come up very quickly? God's about to touch you in a powerful way. God, I thank you, Jesus, for the fire of God that would rest on this place. And if you would say to me, Rich, I want a radical touch from God. I am hungry for the real thing. No Christian hocus pocus. I want the real thing. I'm hungry for a radical touch from God. I need a touch from Jesus tonight. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet as quickly as you possibly can. Holy Spirit, I see the faith of the people here in the room. I see the faith of the people here in the room. If you sense the presence of God just in the room, I want you to give me a wave right now. And just keep waving and look around the room. Just look around the room. Either you're all crazy or this is real. This is real. And the spirit realm is real. And He's manifest Himself here. And there is an open heaven amongst us because of the atmosphere of His glory. And in an open heaven, sickness starts to stop being existing. In an open heaven, people get radically touched by God. If you're standing right now, you're a woman and a man of faith. I want you to just start praying. God, touch me. God, mark me. God, mark me. I don't even need a hand laid upon me, but God, mark me by your presence. When I got filled with the presence of God for the first time, no one laid hands on me. Someone prayed from the front and I fell out in the power of God. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would mark a people with a grace for signs and wonders in the marketplace and in the church, God. God, I ask right now as hands are open and eyes are closed. God, that you would release a mantle for signs and wonders in this place. For signs and wonders in this place. We're John baptized with water. God, I ask that you would baptize them with fire right now in Jesus' name. And if you sense the fire of God on you, I want you, or you're, there's something happening. You're like, something is happening. I want you as quickly as you can to come to the front. And I want Jackie to come lay hands on you and AJ to come lay hands on you. Come as quickly as you can to the front and come up standing. Come here quickly, 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 quickly. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And team, bless what the Lord is doing. Run up to them quickly and bless them. Oh, someone come catch for me. Fire of God right now. Fire of God. Someone catch a fire right now. But bam, 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 bam. It's going all the way to your grandfather and your father. Holy Ghost. Fire of God. The fire of God. Watch it. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. They can take it, take it, take it. Bam, bam, bam. The fire of God. The fire of God. This lady catch her fire right now. God anoint her. Healing God. I see a miracle in Jesus' name. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh, prophetic warrior. I see an anointing on your life for prophecy. God anoint her with the fire of God right now. One, two, three. Bam. In Jesus' name. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Give the Lord a clap like people are getting touched right now. Fire, God, right now. Take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Put your hand on her stomach quickly. Fire right now, God. All the way back to her mother's side. All the way back to her mother's side. And I see the Lord anointing you. Your mom was supposed to carry this prophetic grace. I see the Lord anointing you for a prophetic grace. Fire right now. Fire right now. Fire right now. Holy Ghost, if you're near someone that's up at the front, come and just lay a hand on them. Holy Spirit, more fire, God. Fire of God on you. The fire of God. 
the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, yeah, fire God. Put your hand on your throat. God, I ask in Jesus' name, a miracle in Jesus' name, freedom. This is a significant moment. This isn't just tears. This is the moment of truth. God, the fire of God. the miraculous God I ask for your power to rest on you I speak your love your love the love of God the love of God the love of God upon it God I declare in Jesus name the resurrected power of Jesus upon it the resurrected love of Jesus upon it I speak to your bones, I speak to your blood, I speak to your organs. I declare seven times healthier, seven times stronger. Seven times healthier, seven times stronger. The fire of God resting on it. In Jesus' name. The
just want you. We just want you. Hey. Whoa. Holy Spirit, I just bless what you're doing in this place. I bless what you're doing in this place. If you sense the anointing in this place, I want you to just wave your hand at me. Just wave your hand if you sense there's an anointing in the house. If you look around the room, these people are either crazy or this is real. There is an open heaven grace for God to release the miraculous. I believe people here have already been healed. They have come into the building with pain in their body. They've come into the building and they had low mobility or pain in their back or they had an issue with their eyes or their knees or there's been some pain. And I believe that you've already been healed in the presence of God, just in the atmosphere of Jesus, because in His presence, I believe there is fullness of joy, and that is strength that comes to bodies. I believe God has already healed people in the room. That there is a grace, not because of a powerful ministry, but because Jesus is the Messiah. That the Messiah is not dead, He is alive. Turn to someone next to you and say, the Messiah is alive. I want you by faith right now to start testing your body out, to start testing out your knees that where there was pain, to start people with neck pain will be healed in this place. People with back issues will be healed in this place. People with ankle issues and rotator cuffs and, and shoulders and elbows, just start testing things out where there was a pain before. I believe the Lord is releasing healing in bodies right now. That the Lord is releasing healing in bodies. You've seen the power on display. I believe the Lord is releasing the miraculous on display. So just test it out right now. If you had a migraine before or a headache before, if you had a tweaked nerve or no feeling in a certain place of your body. There was a lady in that open heavens meeting, 13 years paralyzed on the left side of her body, totally healed just in the glory of God. Someone on the left side is getting touched by God right now. So just by faith, test it out. Okay? And I, I believe if you are 80% better or more, I want you to give God some glory. And when I count to three, I'm going to get you to wave both hands above your head as loud and as wild as you can so we can put God on display. I'm not doing this to have a good meeting. I believe that signs and wonders reveals that Jesus is the Messiah, that Christ is not dead, but He is alive. And so when I count to three, if you feel like, oh, that pain that was there before is gone, or that pain that was that mobility I didn't have before, but now I have that mobility, or it was, that pain's gone, or I, I can feel that something's happening, I want you to wave both hands above your head when I count to three. Okay, so one, two, both hands, and three, as loud and as high and as fast as you can. Loud and as high and as fast as you can. Just do it again, wave them, don't just lift them, wave them if you can. Keep waving them, 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 that's amazing, keep waving them. Keep waving, wow, okay. If you, if you were waving your hands, you're gonna be part of my ministry team because what God's done in you, He's gonna do through you. So if you waved your hands, just come quickly forward if you can. Just come over here if you can. Come quickly forward if you can. If you were waving your hands, come quickly forward into this little section over here with my friend here. If you're waving your hands, come quickly forward over here. Someone over there at the back, just come. You're gonna be part of my ministry team that you're just gonna lay a hand. Come, come, come. I saw you waving, come over here. Yo, come here quick. If you're waving, just come here very quick. 
Okay, before they pray, I'm just gonna put God on display. We're just gonna just see what God has done here. So I want all your attention just to be drawn here. God's touched people. Was it you too? You're wonderful, I like you. You should come be part of the team too. Yes, you, yeah, yeah. Okay, just put your attention here if you can. I'm just gonna ask you, just in 30 seconds, why don't you come on stage when I ask you, come up. Just in 30 seconds, what happened? What happened to you and what you're giving God glory for? Just in 30 seconds. I want you to just listen here. And remember, it's the only miracle done twice the same in the Bible is the feeding of the 4,000 and 5,000. What they gave thanks for and celebrated multiplied. If you are still trusting for your miracle, a celebration will equal a multiplication. And I want you to celebrate the five loaves and fish, what God has done. We haven't even prayed yet for people to be healed. This was just in the atmosphere God healed. This is just in the atmosphere. So your role is to celebrate as loud and as proud as you possibly can. Does that make sense? Okay, so 30 seconds, tell us your name and what happened. Uh, my name is Jackson and I was praying for others and then God touched me. My Achilles tendons have been killing me for weeks and I wasn't even praying for myself. I was praying for others, but then God healed me. So praise God. So, your Achilles heal. So do, do something do something that if you did it before, you would have pain, but now you do it and there's no pain. Just look there. Just watch that. Either that is the Lord. Just do it again. Just jump up and down again. His Achilles heel, his Achilles heel was pulled and in lots of pain. And he came in and literally he's jumping up and down. No pain. No pain. Is that true? No pain? Yeah, no pain. No pain. No pain. Give the Lord another clap. Okay. This is part of our ministry team. If you need healing in your body, I'm gonna make a call at the end of these testimonies. You're gonna to come to some of these people who have been miraculously healed. Come here quickly. Yeah, come. God's gonna to touch you. Yes, you. The lady just, yeah. Flowers, yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. Okay, come up here. Come tell me what happened. Tell us what happened. I just felt the presence and peace of God on my heart and my life like never before. And wow. I just know he's, he's there and he loves us and I'm more convinced than ever of his goodness. So hold on, so you felt the peace and the power of God like never before, never before? Well, I've always known God my whole life, but, but I could feel his presence and his peace like in my physical heart. Give the Lord a clap right now. Do you, mind, do you mind just being my catcher over here? Come behind her. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the grace resting on this woman. I bless the peace in her heart. God, would you pour your fire out right now? The fire of God. Fire of God in Jesus' name. Fire God, fire God, fire God, fire God. Okay, someone that would heal. Come here. Yo, tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. I've, I've just been really dizzy all day and I'm just com feeling completely better. So you came in here dizzy. Just very dizzy and a little nauseous all throughout the day. Yeah. Dizzy and nauseous throughout the day and you came in here and there's no dizziness, no nauseous? I feel a fire in my belly, a good fire. The dizziness is gone. The dizziness is gone. Oh, give the Lord a clap right now. If there have been people that have been struggling with migraines, the Lord is healing migraines right now. Put your hand on your head and just say fire. Come up, come up. Yeah, just. Okay, when you said the power of God hit that, um, that row right there. I remember that whole row went out under the glory. Bam, 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 bam. I've had a major touch from God. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just been so awesome. It's like, it just keeps going and going and going. I'm so hot. And it's just like the fire of God just hit me. My feet hurt when I came in. They don't hurt no more. But yep. your feet hurt when you came yeah, in. They don't hurt no they more. Hurt. And you experienced. I couldn't do this no more. I have you couldn't do that. But the other things, like, I don't know because I can't test it out. But I, I believe I'm healed. Diabetes and a rheumatoid arthritis. I believe it's gone. And Open up your hands. Someone could jump up behind her. Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. She experienced your fire like never before. I speak over the arthritis and I declare in Jesus' name it is canceled. Right on the stage, right here in Jesus' name. Your fire right here. Your fire, God, right now, right now, right now. Yes, Sarah, put your hand on her stomach. Yeah, yeah. Come tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. You're gonna have to come over here. 
And just look, look, bring your attention here. Yeah, just 30 seconds. All right, well, I had some deliverance. You got delivered? Wow, okay. Okay. Oh, just stretch your hands out to her. She feels like she got delivered tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you that she will see others delivered through her hands. And I see a deliverance grace on your life to see a people set free. Holy Spirit, mark her and someone just catch her. Fire of God just on her right now. Yeah, tell us what happened. Just 30 seconds. Um, this morning, I was helping my wife lift a heavy bucket and I got a pinched nerve in my back. And uh, as the meeting started, I felt it start releasing and continuing until I came up here and then I just got just that full release of that nerve pain for back so I just speak the same that same freedom from any nerve pain over people here why don't you just give a big clap he got healed of nerve pain he had a pinched nerve in his back and when he had a pinched nerve in his back the Lord healed him of all the pain it all went as he came up here someone else Someone else they were, that was here. Tell us, what was, what was happening with you? Come, tell me what's happening. Uh, I was diagnosed with glaucoma before, but my eyes feel great, and I, I believe to the glory of God they will be healed. So, hold on. So, you were diagnosed with glaucoma, which, tell them, what, what does that mean? Uh, it means the, uh, your eye optic nerve is falling apart, and you're losing your vision. You're going blind. Okay, and then while you were up here, you felt God doing something in you. Absolutely. What, what, did, it, what did it feel like? I, I'm healed. Wow. So what, what, were you, uh, what were your eyes like before, and what are they like now? Uh, they're healed. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a clap right now. Just add your faith. Just add your faith to this man's faith right here. God, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, you was diagnosed with glaucoma. We thank you, Jesus, that you're an overcomer of that in Jesus' name. Someone else quickly, where you got touched, was it you? I can't remember. Yeah, come. Tell us what happened. I remember you. <laughs> Tell us what's happening. Um, I had floaters in my eyes and they're gone. She had floaters in her eyes, floaters in her eyes, and they are gone. Tell them, like, how long have you had them? Probably for like eight months. Eight months. Yeah, and lots of them. And then if you look up, can you see no floaters now? No floaters. She had floaters in her eyes for eight months. If anyone doesn't know what that is, it's when you look up, you see these like floating pieces whenever you look anywhere and God totally took them all away. If you have floaters in your eyes, if you have floaters in your eyes, I want you to just start looking in the distance. I believe God is healing people of eye conditions. We had one man with an eye condition here. We had another lady with an eye condition here. God is healing eye conditions. If you have an issue with your eyes, I want you to raise your hand very quickly. Holy Spirit, we thank you. If someone's hand is raised, just go to them and bless what, just say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Someone else, did, did you get a touch? Someone else, where they, they, they physically got healed. Yo, come here. Come up here. Can you guys hear me? You hear me good? Okay, great. Listen up here. Listen up here. Uh, I either broke or sprained my wrist probably about a year ago. Or not a year ago, a month ago. And uh, I couldn't really have very much mobility to it. And it clicked all the time. But now it's totally fine. I can move it. It was like with my thumb too. I couldn't really move my thumb that much and I can move it around and there's no clicking and it's totally, totally How crazy is that? Lift up your, everyone look here. Lift up your hand and do stuff that you couldn't do before mo mobility wise and with your thumb. So you couldn't do that before and now. Now I can, yeah. And now you can. Yeah. Give the Lord a clap right now. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. Okay, someone else, is there anyone else? They, they got touched. They got physically touched, healed. Quickly, yeah, t tell me what happened. Oh, you're wonderful. Come on stage, everyone needs to see you. Isn't she so beautiful? Yes, what's your name? Michelle. Everyone give it up for Michelle right now. Just in 30 seconds, tell us what happened. Um, I've had pain in my left knee for about two years and 
and it hurts whenever I hyperextend it. So I tried doing it, and I feel no pain. So thank you, Jesus. You've had pain in your knee for two years, and whenever you, what is a hyperextend? Why don't you do something you, that would cause you pain before, but now there's no pain? Will you pop your knee all the way back? So if you did that, you would be, you would be in lot. It, it would hurt when I'd pop my knee back, but it doesn't hurt now. And just everyone look here. She couldn't do this before without pain. And look at that, two years, and now no pain whatsoever. Give the Lord just another big clap right now. Isn't that amazing? Michelle, you're so wonderful. Is your husband here? Where is he? Come over here. Troy, come over here. And you guys have kids? We do. Oh, are your kids here? Is this your kid on the ground? No, right here on the ground. I remember praying for you yesterday. Wow, come over here. This is a family that needs to be celebrated. Come up here. Come up here. I just feel we're supposed to celebrate this family. Can everyone just give this family a big clap right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I like you guys. I like you guys. Look at all these children on the ground here. That's amazing. You're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Give them another big clap. Is there anyone else that I missed? I missed when you were waving hands. You're like, I need to testify. Something's happening. Whoa, whoa. Levi, come here. So, whoa, look at you, man. What, what was happening? Uh, I felt God's spirit in a radical way. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. But What do you think God is doing with you? Well... Earlier today, I was just praying that he would bring me to weeping. I just felt like I was just kind of stone hard. And then I felt people pushing me to the front, slowly, person by person. And then I just found myself in a spot of weeping. Wow. And then from there, I felt God touch me. And wow. And just testify, like, is this normal? Is this like, does this feel like a, just another normal moment? What does this feel like? No, this feels different than any other encounter I've had with God. Oh, did you hear that? He said, this feels different than any other encounter he's had with God. Just give the Lord a big clap right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we give you glory in this place. Oh, we give you glory in this place, God. I thank you for Levi. I thank you that his name means priest. And this house is called to be a house of priests, God. I thank you that this man is significant for the future and the call of priesthood. There's a pastor's call in his life, God. There's a pastor's call in his life, God. Oof. Wow. Wow. Oh, I like you, Levi. You stay with me because I'm going to use you to pray for people. Just stay right here. Just sit right there. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Did I miss anyone with a miracle in their body? That where they, they suddenly felt healing happen in their body? Okay, we haven't even prayed yet. Okay, so if you need a miracle in your body, if you need a, a sign and a wonder, you need God to touch you, I want you to raise your hand as quickly as you can. Okay. Okay, keep your hand raised. Church, you are my ministry team. I want you to find someone with their hand raised, and I want you to go to them. As soon as you have someone that's come to you, I want you to pull your hand right down. Okay, as soon as you have someone that's come to you, pull your hand down. And you and my ministry team, I want you to do the most simple of prayers. Someone, some of the youth, go to that lady over there. If you still got your hand up, some people come to this man over here. And Becca, can we make it just a, can we make it just a little bit quieter? Yeah, yeah, just a little quieter. Okay, who else needs, keep your hand up if you need, and put it down if someone's with you. Put it down if someone's with you. Okay, if there's someone with you, there's a lady over there. Come, you can come forward. Yo. Want this lady over here? Why don't you come forward quickly? Yo. Come over here. 
And I want you just to pray very simple. I want you to pray, Jesus, Jesus. Come if, if you haven't got someone to pray for you, just come forward. We've got lots of people here. And I want you to just lay a hand on them and just pray so simple, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then I want you to just ask them to test it out if they're able to test it out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And if we, when we prayed that very simple prayer and we just tested it out, if you sense relief in your body, 80% or more, when I count to three, I want you to just wave your hands above your head. So one, and just test it out, 80% or more two and three just wave both your hands above your head if you sense like something's happening thank you Jesus something's happening over there thank you Lord God that lady what's happening over there what do you feel like God's doing yeah come quickly 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 yeah Okay, let's say I that over here. I had a pulled muscle um, on the back of my knee, and I didn't even pray about it right now, and I just realized it's gone. I don't feel anything uh, anymore. You had a pulled muscle over here, and it was in lots of pain, and now all the pain's gone. For, for months. It's been at least three months. Three months of pain. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tried to like, massage it out, and nothing worked. And I was just standing there, and I just started, like, not feeling anything and I thought about it and it's gone completely gone wow give the Lord a clap again right now she had a pulled muscle for three months three months of consistent pain and right now all the pain is suddenly gone if while you prayed for someone they're experiencing relief in their body uh, I want you, 80% better or more just wave and just get my attention so we can just glorify God with that is there somebody waving? Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. All those people that were healed, all those people that experienced the healing in your body, you are my ministry team. We're gonna to have to keep, once you push some people out here so we can create some space. If you got healed, I want you to come in front here. You are my ministry team because God, what God did in you, He's gonna do through you. And if you have a condition in your body, like a tumor, cancer, autoimmune disease, something significant where you're like, I just know I need healing. I believe there's a miracle grace for that in the house. And where's my people that got healed? You're going to come right up here. You're going to be my ministry team. Where are you guys? You come, you're going to come with me. If you got healed, why don't you come up here? You're going to come up here too. Come quick, quick, quick. And if I could get some of the prayer ministry team up too, the prayer and ministry team of River House, come up here quick. Okay, so if you need a miracle in your body, this section over here, and where's someone from my team? Where's, oh, Liza, can you help me, Liza? Liza, you're gonna lead a healing time over here. You're gonna lead, this is your ministry team. Matthias, you're going to help. You're going to lead a ministry time over here. Okay, if you need healing in your body, this is the section I want you to come to. I believe God wants to heal people miraculously. Come right here. We have a healing team that is praying here. We're going to continue to pray for people to have encounters with the Holy Spirit. And so if you have faith that God would still touch you, I am willing to stay to pray for every person that needs a touch from heaven, that me and my team would pray. So if you're hungry for a touch from heaven, I would love if you just start lining up and we'll start to pray. You can line up all along here and you can start lining up the section. We're gonna start praying. But if this is my last time uh, and you, that you hear my voice, I wanna pray over this church 
and prophesy. I declare that this church is about to enter a season of signs and wonders. The apostolic grace comes with a signs and wonders grace. They are couplets and they are paired together. I came here as a minister to deposit this word into the fabric of this carpet, the fabric of this community, that there will be a couplet of signs and wonders and an apostolic grace upon this house of prayer. And I prophesy that there will be miracles that will come from this house, that will be testimonies of, that will be heard by thousands in the valley, that people hear that when you come to this place, there is a faith for people to be healed miraculously because the Messiah is not dead. I thank you for every person that was touched tonight. I thank you for the testimonies that we will hear in months to come of those miraculously healed and touched by the power of God. And I ask God for that India trip to be a signs and wonders trip, God. There will be a grace resting upon them. I thank you for the intercession team of this house, that they would be marked radically by God. And I thank you for the youth of this house, that they would be touched by God. And I want to invite you, if we don't get to pray for you tonight, uh, we are doing an encounter night tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we are doing a night specifically all around encountering the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to invite you and your friends. I believe it's going to be the most significant night of my weekend here. I believe it's the last, like the pinnacle. It's going to be the fireworks display of God's power. And so I want to invite you to come and be part of that. Uh, that's tomorrow night. I'm guessing it's seven o'clock. I don't know. Turn to someone next to you and say, isn't God wow? Isn't God amazing? Turn to someone next to you and say, I really like you. Turn to someone near you and say, someone should date you. I love this church. This is like family to me, and I love each of you guys. What a privilege to run with you together. We built this thing together.
Thank you. 